Hello there, it's Mrs. Trambley. It's time for lesson 12.2, and the title of the lesson is Approximating Square Roots. We're actually going to start off defining what irrational means and talking about the real number system. Those were two of our vocabulary words that we weren't able to talk about in our last lesson because it didn't apply yet. So the first part of this is all about irrational numbers. We've already learned about rational numbers, right? You already know that a rational number can be written as the ratio of two integers, two positive or negative whole numbers. Numbers that cannot be written as the ratio of two integers are called irrational. So basically, if I can't write it as a fraction, and within that fraction, and fractions are, and ratios are the same thing, within fractions, you know you're not allowed to have decimals. I don't know if you knew this, but you're not allowed to have radicals in there either. Okay, so... Um, if you can't write the number as a ratio of two integers, it's irrational. So two examples of irrational numbers are square roots of any whole number that's not a perfect square. Um, and I did show you in class, and if you're watching this because you are absent, uh, you can have one of your friends show you, or you could ask me and I will show you, or ask Mr. Terry and he'll show you. But basically, if you take the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, it's going to be a decimal that goes on and on and on and on. And yes, I am thinking of the song, Don't Stop Believing, It Will Always Happen. So anyhow, if it's not a perfect square and you take the square root of it, it's going to keep going. And this next thing says that the decimal form of an irrational number does not terminate or repeat. So if you have something that does not terminate or repeat, you have an irrational number here. So that is any non-perfect square root. So if you take a look here, you don't have to flip, but I'll go right back to it. Notice with these square roots that we just did, I jump from the square root of 1 to the square root of 4 because the square root of 2 is not a perfect square because I can't multiply a number by itself to get 2. Right? You can try. So, well, 1 times 2, oh, wait, it's not the same. And then we get to 2. So if 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4, there's not a way to take a whole number and multiply it by itself to get the 2 and the 3 in between here. Just like I can't do the square root of 5, 6, 7, or 8. Those aren't perfect squares. I could do them and I could estimate and I could round them, but they're not perfect. Same thing here. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all of those values in between, when you take the square root of them, you can't get an integer for your square root. You can't get a positive or negative whole number, so it's not perfect. That would make those irrational. So an example for us to write in the line here um, would be that square root of 2 or the square root of 3, the square root of 5, the square root of 7, the square root of 13, and it goes on and on and on and on. Yep, thinking it again. I can't help myself. It's just, I was just born this way. That's another song. I know, it's crazy. All right, the decimal form of an irrational number does not terminate or repeat. So, for example, if I had negative 2.3, or sorry, 4, 3, 2, 8, and I put some dots after it, that means it's going to continue, not in a pattern, because there is no pattern there forever and ever. Um, I could also have a positive, like 10.01289, dot, dot, dot. And those three little dots there signify that that thing is not going to end. And if it doesn't end, it keeps going forever and ever, right? That means it's irrational. Maybe you've seen the little poster along my wall that has pi, right? and there's no pattern to it, and it just keeps going and going and going, and there's dots at the end, that symbol pi, that represents an irrational number. We use a symbol for that because it would take a really long time to write the digits of pi because they don't end. So be thankful that's not the notes for today. So pi is considered irrational. All right, so going back to this chart here, this might look a little familiar. I hope it does. In Chapter 2, we just focused on this part of it, and we talked about our whole numbers, like 0, 1, 2, 3, and the list goes on. It doesn't include any negatives, but when we got to integers, we were able to include those negative values, and it also includes those whole numbers as well. So integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Whole numbers are just positive whole numbers. And rational, 
it's any number that can be written as a fraction. So that includes all of these because I could write negative 2 as negative 2 over 1. That's a ratio. Um, usually we see like 1.75, negative 2 and a half because I could change this to 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, negative 5 halves. Um, repeating decimals, like 1.3 repeating. Those were rational, right? Because 3 tenths repeating can be written as 1 and 1 third, which then I can change it to an improper. Um, also, if I have, let's see, a terminating decimal, like 1.32. Those are all good. I'll make this one negative so we understand that, yeah, they can be negative as well. So in Chapter 2, we hadn't learned about square roots or any of that yet, so we stopped there. Um, now our chart gets a little bit bigger and I show you the whole real number system. It's called the real number system because there, there are imaginary numbers. And I kind of did go off on a little tangent in class describing them for you. Um, maybe at lunchtime we can chat about imaginary numbers, but yes, they do exist. It's crazy. So in the real number system, there are rational numbers and there are irrational numbers. And I kind of look at like this like, Here's the store I'm going to buy a book at, and there's fiction, and there's nonfiction, and there's different authors that you can have, um, or different types of fictional books. So this is the store. This is the big umbrella. These are the things that fall underneath. So real numbers consist of rational or irrational. And up in our, on our lines there, we have examples of all of these. So square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, square root of 7. Um, I'll put that decimal in there that keeps going on forever and ever. I'll put pi in there. Um, if you take and multiply pi by something, that's also irrational because if you take 2 times something that doesn't terminate, it's not going to terminate. It's not going to stop, so that makes it irrational. If you take pi and you divide it by something, that's irrational as well because, again, if I divide something that's non-terminating by something that is, it's not going to magically give me something that terminates. All right. So what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to classify real numbers. And basically, you did this before, I don't know if you remember the word, whole integer rational, you had to figure out what was what, which category or categories they fell into. Now we're just looking at two categories. Is it rational or is it irrational? And I want you to be able to justify why. Because if you can justify it, that really means you understand it. And that's important. I don't want you to just remember it for a moment. I want you to remember it for a lifetime, or at least for this year, right? Actually, next year you need it too. Pretty much until you graduate. Anyway, take a look here. I have the square root of 12, and I ask, is it rational or irrational? Well, if you have a perfect root, it's, it's going to be rational. So you have to decide, is the square root of 12 a perfect root? Um, and just one little side note here. A perfect, an example of a perfect root is the square root of 16, right? The square root of 16 is 4, and I can write 4 as 4 over 1. And 4 and 1 are both integers, right? So if it can be written as a ratio of two integers, we know that it's rational. So can I write the square root of 12 as a whole number to start? Is there a number that if I square it, I'll get 12? Maybe you think, well, 6. 6 times 2 is 12. No, you have to do 6 times 6. You have to square it, not multiply it by 2. So 6 times 6 is 36. That's too big. Um, let's see, if I did 3, 3 times 3 is 9, too small. 4 times 4 is 16, so that doesn't work. So if 3 doesn't work and 4 doesn't work, because if 3 is too small and 4 is too big, is there a whole number between 3 and 4? No. So that means that this is irrational. Go ahead and write that whole word out. Okay, it's irrational, and the reasoning is the square root of 12 is not perfect. Meaning, there's not a whole number that I can square to get 12. It's not perfect. All right, take a look at the square root of 225. That one was not on our list. Our list only went up to 12. 12 squared is 144. Um, I noticed that that ends in a 5, so I'm thinking maybe 15, because 15 is larger than... 12 and 12 squared is 144 and I won't do it now but lo and behold if you did take 15 and you multiplied it by 15 you would get 225. That means that the square root of 225 equals 15. 
And can I write 15 as a ratio of two integers? You betcha. It would be 15 over 1. So that means that this would be rational. So you're not just looking for the square root sign. You are actually looking to see what is the actual square root. Because if the square root is perfect, it gets to be rational. If it's not perfect, it doesn't get to be rational. All right, this next one is negative 1 and 3 sevenths. And any number that I can write as a ratio of two integers is considered to be rational. If you take negative 1 and 3 sevenths, 7 times 1 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, and I bring that negative sign in, is negative 10 an integer? Yes. Is 7 an integer? Yes. That would make this the ratio of two integers, which means it's rational. All right, pi. This is up on our list up there, right? When you see pi, that represents a non-terminating decimal. And we said that non-terminating or repeating decimals are irrational. So I'm going to write irrational. You should too. And the reason being, it's because it's non-terminating. It won't be back, like the Terminator. Maybe you've never seen that movie. It's kind of scary. All right, so here I have 85 hundredths. If you read it as 0 0.85, it's a little tougher. But if you say 85 hundredths, doesn't 85 hundredths look like that? Yes, isn't that a fraction? Isn't that a ratio? Yep, it's a ratio of two integers. That makes this rational. You don't even have to simplify it. I just have to be able to write it as a ratio of two integers. All right, I'm actually going to stop there, and I'll record the rest of Lesson 12 too shortly. See ya.